Yo, what's going on guys? It's Seabrev. Welcome to another MLB The Show 20 video. Today, Run It Back Part 2 came out, and I'm going to be going through every card in the new pack, talking about how good it is, in my opinion. If you guys are new to the channel, please subscribe for more MLB The Show content. I post a ton of it. Drop a like on the video. It helps me out a ton. Keep in mind, the point of these cards is not necessarily to be viable competitively at this point in the year. They are just kind of fun cards that they're throwing in the pack, so guys like Adam Dunn, Chris Davis, I'm obviously not going to spend a lot of time talking about but there are a couple in this pack that could make your team at this point in the year and there's one guy in particular that is probably a top option at his position let's start off with adam dunn and chris davis together a couple of all-star slash battle royale goons but probably not someone you're going to want on your team uh, for hall of fame and legend games adam dunn's basically a first baseman i wouldn't want to play him in left field Crushes righties with the power. Same with Chris Davis, just a first baseman that crushes righties. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much all they got going for him. Something to mention with Dunn, too. He is six foot six, which is a massive strike zone. He's really tall. So that gave some people some issues last year when he was released a lot earlier. He was actually pretty viable in the meta for a couple weeks. Uh, he's really tall, so if you don't hit well with tall guys, you're not going to have a good time with Adam Dunn. Luis Aparicio. Yeah. Next is Johnny Damon. I actually think this card is laughably bad for the position that he plays. Uh, horrible defense, and I'm going to show you guys a funny comparison in just one second. That new Johnny Damon card is basically Charlie Blackman, but he has 10 less contact versus both sides and about 20 less power versus both sides. So <laughs> if you want to use Damon, just use Blackman instead, but nobody uses Blackman anyway. All right, Bruce Suter. This is a guy I want to spend a little bit of time on, actually. Uh, potential to make your bullpen at this point in the year for sure, but on a couple of conditions. So a couple of things I really like about this card, 38 stamina is pretty high for a reliever. A lot of the relievers in this release have high stamina, which is good news. And then almost maxed out per nines. He's got maxed out K per nine and 114 hit per nine. Um, and he's always been a really unique card in the game. He was absolutely meta in MLB 9, or 18 when splitters were the best pitch in the game. Last year, I still thought he was really good as well. He's very unique. Uh, like I said when I talked about Neshek in the past, there's not a lot of like unique finesse pitchers. This is one of them. So you could definitely put this guy in your bullpen, but I am a little bit concerned because it might seem obvious, but how good this card's going to be is going to be entirely dependent on how well he can locate his splitter. He throws the best splitter in the game. That's like his signature pitch. You get yourself a Bruce Suter to throw a splitter. So um, I'm a little concerned because the walks per nine are low and the control is only 88. Um, and the way pitching mechanics work this year, I'm sure you guys know, is that very often with pitches like splitters and other off-speed, you could get a perfect release with meter or analog pitching, and the ball will still hang anyway, especially when you're trying to throw it low in the zone. It just always magnetizes towards the middle somehow. So if this card's a magnet king, he's going to be pretty much unusable. But if he's able to throw his splitter to all four corners and command it very well, this could be a very unique option in the back end of the bullpen that not a lot of people are going to be used to seeing. And uh, he could definitely miss some bats and miss some PCIs. Uh, maybe a very good pitcher for All-Star as well, considering he's basically just a pitch-to-contact guy since you're going to be slowing the bat down a lot with the splitter and then trying to blow the four seams by him. Warren Spawn, another guy that could maybe sneak into some people's rotation for fun at this point in the year. The per nines are very low, um, and his delivery is incredibly annoying. I think it's even longer than Walter Johnson's. Um, so that's definitely going to frustrate your opponent, and there's something to be said about that, but you may also be frustrated by it. Uh, the reason I think this card might be sneaky good is because it's a really good meta for left-handed pitching. Uh, specifically starting pitching. A lot of people's lineups are crushing righties at this point in the year, so lefties are slightly better. Also, his pitch repertoire is better this year than I remember it ever being. His four seam can hit 99, and his sinker's got great differential down at 93. Uh, basically, his off-speed pitches are very well spaced out. You're probably going to have to stick with four-seam sinker slider with this card, but I definitely think he could be effective, especially lower levels on All-Star where uh, per nines don't matter as much. Cargo, this is a super fun card. Cargo cards always play really well. I love that he's a primary left fielder as well. He's got the 93 fielding, 90 reaction, which is going to give him diamond defense in left field. If you play him in right, he's going to go down to gold, so I would definitely recommend playing him in right field. But this is a card that a lot of people that play mostly exclusively on, exclusively on All-Star and Hall of Fame are going to love this card always plays above his attributes at the plate he plays really good defense obviously with those attributes uh, just all around a card that's a fan favorite and a card I could definitely see a lot of people enjoying 
uh, for fun at this point in the year. One thing to be said about Cargo is if you hit with strike zone camera, he's got a very exaggerated leg kick when he loads for when the pitch is about to come in, and some people in the past have found that very distracting. So keep that in mind if you do hit on strike zone camera. He's got a big leg kick that kind of crosses into the screen right as the pitch is about to come in. All right, Dennis Eckersley, another one I'm really excited to talk about, probably just because I'm a biased A's fan, but yet another unique finesse pitcher finally joining the meta. We've gotten a ton of them recently, which I'm a really big fan of. Unfortunately, Eckersley is a card that I don't really know how to feel about. I think he's going to be good. I really do. Uh, the walks per nine is super high. His hits per nine, K per nine are good enough. The slider primary is something that I'm always a big fan of. Uh, I would assume he'll be able to command that slider like no other with how high his walks per nine and control ratings are. Uh, but Eckersley last year for me, it was the same exact card, and he did have a tendency to get beat up at times. I don't know what it was. It seemed like he was feast or famine. Either he'd throw two shutout innings or he'd give up like four runs in one inning. So remains to be seen. He does throw the four seam at 97 miles an hour, which I think is really good for Eckersley considering he's basically a finesse pitcher. You can kind of weave that four seam in and catch people off guard and kind of miss their PCI if they're sitting sinker or if they're sitting slider. And I probably wouldn't throw the curveball much with this card um, considering it's his fourth pitch, but you may be able to jam lefties with it. Overall, I think he's a pretty good option. I don't think he's top four for righties right now, but I'm going to use him and we'll find out for sure. Cepeda in the same category as Spawn in that this is the first time I can recall that he's gotten a high diamond card in a very long time in an MLB The Show Diamond Dynasty, so it's pretty cool. Um, even if this card came out earlier in the year, like if he was in the XP reward path, though, I think people would not be a very big fan of him. If you don't know, Cepeda has maybe the most closed off stance out of anybody in the game. I mean, this man just lives on top of home plate. So you are going to have to be able to turn on inside pitches more than any other card. Um, it's kind of a liability, to be honest. Like, his stance is so closed off. Um, I think with first base being so deep that uh, you don't need to use a card that kind of has a liability like that, just my opinion. But super fun card. Obviously, his hitting stats are crazy, too. Uh, for basically a free card if you do the conquest or the showdown. So I'm a fan, uh, but I don't think people are going to like hitting with this card very much. Second to last card is another fun one. I think they did him kind of dirty on his walks per nine. I tweeted out that he only walked 43 people in 325 innings in this year that he won the Cy Young, 1971. So I wish his walks per nine was a little higher than 107, but 107 is still crazy. Um, Fergie Jenkins, a lot to be said. He's kind of a fan favorite as well. Um, the reason he's a fan favorite is because his control in game is always absurdly good. And so I think this is card kind of like reverse Bruce Suter that really plays well into how pitching mechanics work this year. Really the only knock against him is the 83 hits per nine is pretty low for this point in the year. Um, but again, if you play an all-star, that's not as big of a deal. Basically this Fergie Jenkins card, you're going to be able to dot wherever you want. And he has a really slow fork ball. Not a lot of starters even throw fork balls. Fergie may be one of the only ones. Um, he can only throw 96 on his fastball, but the slider is still pretty hard. Uh, basically, you want to throw a four-seam slider, fork ball with this card, and his control is very good. So I think he is probably going to get rocked against good players, to be honest with you. Um, it all depends on how well you can locate if you can hit the corners. I guess that's true with every pitcher. Uh, but something to be said about having big stam there, 125 stam, and uh, being able to hit your spots with the high walks per nine. Fergie, great control pitcher. I'm excited to try him. I don't really know how well he'll do in the meta, though. And finally, this flashback Josh Hader finest card from last year, MLB The Show 19, the golden child of the Run It Back Part 2 release. Just a crazy card. This card was easily a top three lefty in the game for me last year, and I do think he sneaks into top three lefties in the game this year as well. This is a Josh Hader card with a changeup. Um, his live series, if you didn't know, does not have a changeup, which is one of the reasons why he was so bad. Uh, but the four seam hits 99. The two seam is significantly slower. You can throw the two seam as slow as 92, which is very effective, especially if people are sitting off speed. And then the slider is a slow loopy one, can go down to 80 miles an hour. And the changeup being at 88 miles an hour, I think actually makes this card very good. That's a hard enough changeup that you can throw it also up as well as down. Um, you can throw his changeup all over. His changeup was my favorite pitch on this card last year. 
I mean, you can kind of tell just by looking on paper, uh, but this card is definitely a top lefty option in the game. And again, high stamina, 37 stamina for a reliever is very, very high. You're going to be able to get a couple innings out of this guy if you need to. On top of the max per nines and the max pitching clutch, your opponent is going to have the smallest PCI that they can possibly have. So huge fan of this card. I do think he's top three along with uh, 99 Billy Wagner and 97 Araldus Chapman. That would be my ideal bullpen would be those two and this new Josh Hader. And if you're wondering, he does not get outlier, only 86 velocity there, but his four seam does hit 99 if you throw at max effort. So really big fan of this card. Definitely a meta defining card going to be in my bullpen for sure. So that's going to do it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments about any of the new cards that came out in this release, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, please drop a comment as well. I hope you pull Josh Hader. And uh, to close this one out, we got a couple of run at backpacks, and that's exactly what we're going to try to do here. So hopefully we can pull Josh Hader out of this one. Like I said, he's definitely the golden child of this pack. So let's see how our luck is doing today. We big whiffed on this one. <laughs> the only new cards we got were Spawn and Aparicio. That's pretty meme. Uh, I'm going to take Spawn because taking Aparicio would mean that I don't have any self-respect or dignity. Uh, so Warren Spawn joining the inventory. We got one more shot at Josh Hader. What are we going to get? Oh, baby. <laughs> Card number one. He's selling for 146000 already. That's amazing, man. Should we take Johnny Damon? I'm just kidding. Let's go, dude. I am so happy now. Josh Hader acquired. We didn't spend a single stub. I love this running back content stuff, man. So Such an easy way to get free cards and easy stubs, man. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm super glad we just pulled Hater. <laughs> Appreciate all the support from you guys this year. Take care.